Hello, and welcome back. In this episode, we'll be taking these printouts that you can see here, and we'll be using those to make a kind of modular bridge. So, let's get started. Okay then, so before we begin, I just want to explain how the whole thing works. So, if we roughly cut out this piece here, um, if we want to make a bridge that sits flat on the table, then we'll just need the top triangular piece that's highlighted here, and uh, we can ignore the rest. On the other hand, let's say that we want to make a bridge that spans the gap between two raised areas, like I've shown here, then what we'll need to do is measure the height of those pieces, and then measure out that distance on the paper printout that I showed at the beginning, so that this distance here, that's the same height as the raised areas. However, for this particular build, I want to make a bridge that spans a couple of dungeon tiles. So, in this example, I'll need to measure the height of the tile itself, and transfer that height to the printout in the exact same way as I did for the taller bridge. And because I only really need this shape in this instance, I'll also trim away some of the excess, just to save on cardboard. And speaking of which, we'll then need to glue this texture to some double corrugated card or similar, and uh, for this, I'll just use a regular glue stick. So, there you go. And when that's dry, we can cut it to size with a sharp knife, though we will need to make two of those. Okay, next we'll take the floor texture from the same page, and we're going to be gluing that to some thick card. And when that's had plenty of time to dry, we'll cut those out, like you can see here. But before we go any further, I do just want to quickly point out that these floor tiles, they're not exactly square. They, uh, they actually have a short side and a slightly longer side, and we'll need to keep that in mind for the next step. Anyway, we'll only need one of these for now. Okay, next we'll apply some hot glue to the sloping side of one of the first pieces that we made, and we'll then glue the longer side of the floor pattern along the edge. And then we can do the same thing on the other side, so that it's kind of like a mirror image of the first one. Basically, we're aiming for something like this, so hopefully you can see what I've done there. Right then, next we'll take one of these textures, and just like before, we'll mark out the height of the floor tile, and cut away some of the excess. And this time, we'll need to glue that to some single corrugated cardboard. And again, we can cut that to size once it's dry. However, we will need to add another texture to the back, so we'll cut out one of the triangular brick patterns that matches, and then glue that into place, just using the glue stick again. So, uh, something like this. And we will, of course, need to make two of those, one for each side. Then, it's just a matter of gluing both of these on top of the first side pieces that we made, making sure that we align them as best as we can. And with any luck, that should result in this kind of thing that you can see here. Okay, next we'll take these two textures, and we're going to be gluing those to some more of the thick card. And for this next part, we'll first need to cut the brick pattern to size, and from that, we'll cut a piece that's the same size as the overall height of the bridge. Essentially, this side here needs to be the same size as this side here. Then we can simply apply a thin line of hot glue to the, the very end of the bridge that I just indicated, and, uh, and glue this little piece into place so that only half of it is stuck to the bridge itself. Um, basically, we're aiming for something like this. So, uh, the little cardboard strip, it, uh, it overhangs the one side by around a quarter of an inch. And for the final part of this first assembly, we're going to need the other texture that we glued to the card. But before we cut it to size, we'll first need to measure the combined width of the bridge wall and the cardboard piece that we just added, and, uh, and then measure out a strip that's a little bit wider, um, maybe around a millimetre wider, and then cut it to size. Then, from this piece, we'll need to cut out a length that's nine bricks long. So, that's what I'm doing here, counting twice to make sure. There you go. And we'll also need to score a line along the edge of one of the end bricks, so that we can fold it into this kind of shape, which will allow us to glue it over the edge of the exposed corrugation, like so. And we'll need to make two of those. Then, it's just a matter of applying a thin line of hot glue to the exposed edge of the cardboard, and gluing one of these pieces on top. And uh, when doing this, I am trying to make sure that the inside edge is flush with the wall just so that it doesn't interfere with any models that might be standing on the bridge. 
And there you go, there's the finished piece, with all of the corrugated edges covered. And uh, if I bring in the tile that I'll be using with this, you, uh, you can see how the little cutout works. So uh, yeah, that should work quite nicely. And that's the kind of on-ramp done. Okay then, so for each of the modular sections of the bridge, it's a similar procedure. So we'll first take this printout and measure out the same distance that we did before, cut away most of the excess, and then glue that to some more double corrugated card. Then we can just cut the pieces to size and uh, for each section we'll just need two of these. Next we'll take the floor pattern, glue that to some more thick card, again, and uh, once that's dry we can cut it up into three different 2x2 two two sections, though we'll only need one of these for each piece. Then, just like before, we'll glue the two corrugated pieces to the underneath, so that we have a little raised platform almost. Then we'll take the side texture and do a similar thing, so that's marking a distance below the guideline that's the same thickness as the dungeon tile, cutting away some of the excess, and then sticking that to more corrugated cardboard, which we can then cut to size, like so. And once again, we'll need to cover some of the back of this piece, so we'll cut out a strip of the brick pattern that's the same width, which we can then glue to the back. So, there you go, something like that. And we'll need to make two of those. So, there you go. Okay, now we can glue these two pieces into place, just like we did with the sides of the first part of the bridge. And that should result in something like this. Um, as I say, it's a very similar process. Right then, next we'll cut out a couple more of the upright brick textures, that's the one that we previously glued to some thick card, and glue those into place. Though we are only going to glue one to each side, uh, in this example I'm gluing them on my right again, uh, that's your left from this angle, and it's important that we keep this consistent. And this is how it looks when that's done. So they overhang each end by half of their width, and as I say, I'm only gluing them on the right hand side. Okay then, to finish them off, we'll take two strips of the kind of rail texture again, um, this time they're eight bricks long, and glue those into place as well. And there you go, there's the finished piece. And we can of course make as many of these as we like. So, as a quick example, here's another one that I've made off camera, and if I just slot those two together, this is what they look like. Then all we'll need to do is grab a couple of the end pieces and slot those into place as well. And uh, yeah, there you have it. There's a finished bridge, which doesn't actually look too bad. So I'll just bring in the dungeon tiles that I showed earlier. And uh, there you go. If you, if you imagine a water texture underneath it, or maybe a piece of black paper cut into a chasm shape, I, uh, I think it should work quite well. So uh, yeah. Here's a picture from a slightly better angle of the bridge in action and I, I look forward to hearing what you think of this one and if you plan on making something similar yourself. But that's it for another episode so I should probably do that thing where I say remember to like, subscribe, support the Patreon and all that nonsense but uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.